Hello and welcome to my world. I'm, of course, Fred Kasdan. Seven nights a week, as you know, you can find me streaming live over on my Twitch channel, the link of which can be found in the description below. Now, as you know, I used to be a major wrestling fan. Not so much anymore, but I do keep up with it from time to time on things like YouTube, looking at clips and highlights, as well as checking out... Um, some sites that uh, regurgitate and post uh, a lot of the rumor and innuendo that Dave Meltzer puts out there. But something that's always, that, that's caught my mind and attention in recent weeks has been the whole Matt Hardy and Limbo thing. Um, and it's quite clear to me that Matt Hardy is really trying to get that... Um, Sympathy support, either because he knows he's at the tail end of a long career and his only real opportunity to get a main event level push is if he can gain enough support that will force the WWE to use them in a in a higher capacity than they have been in recent years or to get enough support to where he can go to some place like AEW AEW and and be used in a top level program there because let's face it Matt Hardy is 45 years old he's been wrestling since what 92, 93, 94, somewhere there's about. So you're talking nearly 30 years at this point. And it's quite clear when you watch him that he is nowhere near the performer that he was five years ago, let alone 10, 15, or 20 years ago. And I'll be nice and say that Matt Hardy's peak was as an in-ring performer was probably 2003, 2004. More so, more so, so 2003 because in 03 he was wrestling in the cruiserweight division, so that was probably his best work as a singles. I mean that his match was very mysterious. WrestleMania 19. Uh, Probably the second best best match on that show behind Michael's Jericho. But take a look at what I'm saying. That was 2003. Here we are in 2020. Now, a lot of people say that, oh, Matt Hardy really should have been used as a main event level talent. And he just never got the opportunity. To which I say he did get an opportunity. He got a big opportunity and dropped the ball. Remember the last time Matt Hardy was a topic of conversation where he was getting a lot of sympathy support and and people wanted to see him uh, get a major opportunity? Go back to 2005 when he was fired for how badly he handled the fact that his girlfriend ended up having fun with some a lot more fun with someone else for for a period of time Matt hardy was fired went on the internet bitch uh, bitched whined and moaned for a period of time ended up getting rehired and put right into a top level program with a guy who uh had fun with his then ex-girlfriend, Edge. They had, they were featured spots at uh, that year's SummerSlam. A, a great match. Uh, well, at least Edge carried Matt to a great match at the Unforgiven. And then they had a match that really underwhelmed at Raw Homecoming, if memory serves me right, in October. So they had a program that lasted three months, and by the end of it... People didn't give a damn about Matt. And because his in-ring work was shoddy, he was moving slow, and his promos were abysmal. And it also didn't help that he looked like he uh, got on whatever gas that Triple H uses 
when he decides to bulk up. <laughs> it's like that definitely didn't help. Um, so I was like, okay, Matt could, can't be used in a main event level program. He did find his niche once again as a, you know, quasi as a comedy character with working off of Montel Vontarius Porter on SmackDown, but that wasn't a main event level spot. Sure, it had some memorable moments and things, and he got the box Evander Holyfield, but it was like, okay, it's a, it's a gimmick. It's a niche thing. It wasn't something that uh, was going to bring in any real box office for the WWE. Fast forward many years later, when he leaves the WWE uh, a second time, not being uh, uh, fired, or at least memory, I don't think he was fired the, the second time. He go, ends up going in TNA, flounders as a heel, and reinvents himself with the crazy hair and the stupid accent and the drone and all, all that. It, it got him into being a Kind of a feature spot, but it was quite clear that he was a cult character, meaning he kind of had a limited appeal, and TNA even knew that. It gave him feature. It gave him, it gave him, uh, a lot of him a uh, quite a bit of time, but TNA wasn't exactly basing everything around him. It was like, okay, this is what, uh. The whacked out dude from North Carolina is doing this week. And then he comes back to the WWE, is a tag team with Jeff, and uh, wins the tag titles at a WrestleMania, which fucked over the three other teams that were involved in that match. This is my personal opinion on that, which is actually fact. And teams with Jeff for a time. Jeff either gets injured or they split, and then they split him up one or the other. Matt goes solo, goes into a whole journey to bring his broken, woken character from TNA to the main, to the national level in the WWE, and it goes over like a like a fart in church. It just falls flat because it wasn't something that was going to be a main event level persona. Quite a bit of time was wasted on it, but is what it is there. But you kind of can see when you look at Matt's track record, never main event. At best, lower upper mid card. In a pinch, you he got slotted there following two thousand, following the stuff with Edge in two thousand five and. But uh, the highest he ever has been on a national level, on the biggest available platform, the stuff with Montel Vontavious Porter, but again, they, that was kind of like a, a B storyline on the B show featuring B performers. It was like, it was what it was there. But the question then remains going over all this, does Matt have, is Matt of any value as an in-ring performer in 2020? Now, if he was a much better in-ring worker, like, like a Brooklyn Brawler where anyone that beats him actually comes across as, uh, like they beat someone that they know they they were gonna lose, but the fact that they beat him is makes him a bigger star. That could be valuable that way, but he's not that good an in ring worker. He hasn't been in quite some time, to where he can get someone over just by having a match with him. He's never been that guy. Um, I think. There was rumor and innuendo to saying that he was a producer and was able to give creative insight. Well, he definitely has a mind there. We'll say this for him. He's creative. That whole crazy hair, stupid accent, drone thing. It was certain. It was certainly creative. 
but maybe Matt's best thing is he's gonna be the guy that you end up seeing at the county wrestling at the county fair and so forth. He might be the embody the true modern day embodiment uh, of what the Mickey Works character in that movie, The Wrestler, was stereotyping that he's gonna be that guy. That just can't uh, move on, thinking he should be at a top spot somewhere, but it is what it is there. Which actually leads me to wonder this. Should he be a topic of conversation at this stage in the game? And no, it's quite clear that there are many other people that are certainly a lot, that are worth, that are worth a lot more of people's attention to that guy Ali on the SmackDown brand definitely looks like he has a lot more upside and kind of wish people were giving him more of the time of day in terms of wondering how come he's not being used because he actually has a potential of being around for a good 10 to 15 years uh, if, if not in the WWE but in some other promotion maybe going in and out of the WWE Matt Hardy does not have that amount of time left on his career. But of course, that's just my opinion. And in my world, that's all that matters. <laughs> anyway, long way to go just to get here. But thank you for listening. If you have your thoughts on Matt Hardy and if he should be a topic of conversation, um, post why you actually give a damn about him in the, the description below. But just shooting off the top of my head here, definitely not worth it. Anyway, catch you over on my Twitch channel and, and of course hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications and so forth and we'll see you all next time.